speaking this morning with the Chief Executive of Imugene, Leslie Chong, as well as Dr Fong, uh, Chair of the Department of Surgery at City of Hope, also on the advisory, the Scientific Advisory Board at Imugene and the inventor of CF33. Dr Fong, Leslie, good morning. Good morning. Good morning, Andrew. Look, lots to catch up on. Uh, Leslie, firstly, big bit of news here. First patient dosed in the phase one bile tract cancer study. Uh, give us a bit of an update. That's right. So we have a, a study that we call MASS, Metastatic Advanced Solid Tumor Study. That's with the vaccine of the parental CF33 virus. We have been dose escalating. So phase one, just for your audience, is all about finding that dose so that you can move forward into a marketable drug. So we are still continuing to look at that dose. We're at one of the highest doses at the moment. But in addition to that, during the dose escalation, we found a few patients that were bile tract cancer indication. And we found that we were able to truly affect those tumor types to the point where one bile tract cancer patient has been without tumor, no tumor, for over 600 days. So they're almost going on two years, which is quite remarkable. And so we are taking that approach. We've already uh, approached the FDA about a fast track designation. We received that. So bile tract cancer is the one we're moving forward with to do a expansion trial. And if we see results, um, we will turn that into what's called a phase two study. So it's a true unmet need. We're going to go as fast as we can, but find meaningful data so that we can particularly make that into a drug. And this is, so this is using CF33. Uh, Dr. Fong, this is your baby. You're the inventor. Tell us a bit more about it, how it works. Oh, CF33 is a virus we designed in the laboratory that infects and kills uh, cancer at a very low dose, okay? So the uh, whole idea of finding viruses that only infect cancer, not far-fetched, because in nature, viruses like only infecting certain cells. So hepatitis viruses only infect liver cells, meningitis only the brain. So we think we have actually designed a virus that only infects cancer. And, uh, and so those things that we've seen in the laboratory and in animal studies, it's just been quite remarkable to see a lot of them in humans as we go forward in testing. So I thank Leslie and Imogene for taking the product forward and doing these trials so quickly. But what we've seen in bile duct cancer has been quite surprising to me and pleasantly surprising to me. This is a disease that I've treated for 40 years. When somebody has stage four disease, widespread disease, usually their lifespan is in months and usually chemotherapy and radiation doesn't work. And in our trial, you have to actually have to have, have failed chemotherapy to enter. And, uh, and to have a patient that actually now is disease-free, all that the cancer is gone, and without treatment for now uh, uh, over a year uh, and still disease-free. And then the second patient, we've only treated two before uh, moving ahead with it as a specific indication, that have the second patient with a disease basically has frozen in its tracks and not grown. And uh, and so the first two patients, it's it's something that I have not seen before with any other therapy. So quite exciting and uh, very happy to move forward with this. Well, clearly... You're confident in this treatment, but seeing such an early complete response, did that take you by surprise? I very much by surprise, but pleasant surprise. And uh, so look, looking for more, Andrew. <laughs> Certainly. And Leslie, also an update here on, on Carlytics. Uh, where are we with this trial? That's right. So we call that on Carlytics trial OASIS. It's a phase one where we've taken CF33 and it expresses or covers a solid tumor with the flag. So it's sort of a mark and then kill approach by a CD19 targeted therapeutics. So CD19 therapies that are targeted towards a CD19 moves around all day looking for these tagged solid tumors. It's a revolutionary novel idea doesn't exist anywhere except at imaging. And we already have a patient uh, in with that combination. 
So that's, we were very happy to announce our first patient in that study. We'll have many more in that combination and we'll gather that data, but we're quite excited about, about that study. Has CD19 only been used so far for blood cancers? Yeah, so CD19 is a protein that we find on blood cancers such as leukemias and lymphomas. But it's been a highly successful target, meaning that all the medicines that have been made against it, including uh, I, I, T cells, as well as I, I antibodies, uh, these have been highly successful in bringing about remission, even in patients who have failed chemotherapy and failed bone marrow transplant. There is no such similar protein in, in other solid tumors. Uh, what solid tumors are, are uh, tumors such as breast cancer or brain cancer or colon cancer or lung cancer. And in these tumors, most of the proteins that we've been trying to target also exist in normal tissues. And therefore, patients, we just can't give enough and not harm the patient. So we said, since we have a virus now that is really good at infecting any cancer at very low doses, what if we used it to just put CD19 protein on any of these cancers and try to use all those medicines that have been designed for leukemia and lymphoma and use them to go and finish killing the cancer? And uh, so, again, we're very excited about moving into humans because in animals, we've been able to cure almost every type of cancer that we tried with this approach. And these solid tumors, these account for what, 90% of cancers, do they? 90% of cancers and most of the cancer deaths. So what, what are the next steps as far as development here? So we need to gather the data, keep treating the patients, hopefully keep seeing the results that we, the results that we're seeing, we hope to continue that on. So that's why we're going into bile tract cancer with vaccinia. We'll look at another indication um, later on this year with on carolytics in the OASIS study, we'll keep com keep dosing in that combination with various different cancer type to kind of triangulate as to which indications work the best. And I'm a big believer in that unmet need requires less amount of patients to prove to the FDA that it works so that it can be a drug faster. And Dr. Fong, is the is this on carolytics trial happening at the at City of Hope? So you're playing a big role here. We are one of the centers, and uh, but the reason that I've been so excited about all of this is because Leslie and Imogen, they've actually engaged quite a number of centers around America and in Australia for these trials. And uh, so now we, this is not going to be data coming from one center. This is going to be data verified by other centers. And so we're hoping that that will even make it more admissible for, to the FDA to make this a medicine. Leslie, given the success you're seeing so far, you must have a, a bit of interest in terms of potential partnerships or collaborations, have you? Well, look, if we did, I certainly can't talk about it. So, <laughs> so uh, we continue on with data because that's data is king. And just how groundbreaking, Dr. Fong, could this be should you continue to see success here? We are attempting to find a universal therapy for any solid tumor. So that's a big, big step. When we first started saying we were going to go do that, I, I, we had only animal data. Now we have human data. So uh, I'm hoping it pans out. I, I, you know, dreaming big, uh, but now we're starting to get data. So very excited about it. Dr. Fong, Leslie, good to see you this morning. Thanks for your time. Thank you, Andrew. Thank you.